guys welcome back to rocket gyan my fellow space tubers today is a very special day because today we will be witnessing one of the most unique events in the human history uh, or you can say the right brothers event on mars uh, which is the flight of the ingenuity helicopter and uh, if you don't know uh, what ingenuity helicopter is so just to sum up this is the piece of hardware or you can say this helicopter came in the belly of perseverance rover perseverance rover just landed on mars and uh, it was a successful one and then the deployment and all those things happened with this ingenuity uh, helicopter so today is the day when we will be able to find out if the flight of the uh, ingenuity helicopter was successful after nine months in the belly of uh, Percy and uh, then after deployment activities and um, you know there is one thing which is very important which is to survive the cold harsh nights of Mar Mars and uh, it autonomously did that also so today is the day which we'll be able to find out so uh, some quick facts it's a technological demonstration mission it's just uh, a mission in which they will be able to find out whether it is possible also to fly on mars and if it is possible then maybe the next mission to mars is not a rover but a big helicopter <laughs> because obviously helicopter has more range is faster and is able to conduct some aerial views which uh, a rover can't do so it has its own uh, you know place on there so uh, two rotors which will uh, move in uh, inverted direction one will move in clockwise other will, will move in anti-clockwise this is the uh, solar panel most of you were concerned about the uh, this dust on this solar panel but let me just tell you that um, dust on the solar panel is taken care of and it is receiving power from these solar panels they actually tested this so uh, this much of dust is not very much concern i mean it is not working at 100 percent of its efficiency but still it is capable and right now it is recharging the batteries and it was recharged and uh, let me just tell you the thing that uh, they are now receiving the data and confirming whether the flight was actually happened successfully or not so but in reality the flight has actually happened uh, it has been completed and we don't know yet right now whether it has been successful or not because of the time delay of the communication so that is the thing so uh, talking about the flight profile of this uh, uh, helicopter this helicopter will uh, first of all will have uh, you know this is the first flight right so this will be like just testing out all the components so for this flight they will start the motors it will uh, go at one meters per second to three meter height it will hover there for around 30 to 40 seconds and <coughs> sorry and then it will slowly and steadily at one meter per second come down and uh, the mission will be successful if this thing happens so <coughs> that is the thing uh, also during the flight it will take the images of the surface at 30 frames per second 30 photos per second so it, you know we can very well expect a video coming out from the ingenuity helicopter and uh, talking about some of the uh, <clears throat> milestones so this uh, first of all this helicopter is capable of flying up to 90 seconds and about 10 to 15 feet from the ground so there are uh, the the mission duration for the helicopter is for around 30 souls which is 30 martian days and um, it is expected to fly around five times in this duration so right now they uh, when first of all the pre-flight checks there are no pre-flight checks as such because the what mission control does pre-mission control just sends out the command to Percy and then the Percy rel relays it to the helicopter and then it performs its job so that is the thing it flies on its own without any human control so talking about its specs this, these are the sensors and cameras batteries and avionics and body all those things are here in this cubicle body and it just weighs around 1.8 kilograms just 
that and for that only it has such a big rotors around there running at around 4600 uh, rpm and the reason being why is it have to have such a large blade running at around so uh, fast speed because of this less than one percent dense as earth the atmosphere so this is the thing solar panel charges the lithium ion battery providing enough energy for one 90 second flight per martian day so this is the thing and uh, this is the video in which they are actually showing us how the helicopter was released from the Perseus rover so yeah so packing up this uh, uh, helicopter was also a very big task and now they deployed it successfully everything has happened the Percy has moved apart it has like uh, you know it has uh, uh, moved to around 100 meters per second in which it will be watching its child taking its first flight in the atmosphere of Mars yeah it is a, it is her child because it was in it, in its belly for around nine months and uh, so it will be a very unique and emotional event i must say that and uh, let's hope it was successful so yeah this is pretty much about it let me just see if we do have a live stream yet we still have some time so if you have any other questions you can surely ask me right now uh, hi Joshua, hi Arpita Malik, hi Indian Space, hi Subspace Aeronautics and hi Monarch Aerospace. Uh, Monarch Aerospace says we tested our rocket motor but can't get any good PR. By the way rocket motor test was partial success. Congrats to you Monarch Aerospace and uh, don't worry about the PR you will get it once you are just successful <coughs> in the sense uh, you are able to demonstrate uh, the static fire capability and just upload it on YouTube and maybe notify me or some other YouTubers you will get the PR don't worry about that and uh, let me just see if we do have any other update right now we don't expect to have any but uh, still let's hope uh maybe because everything is very much timed right now and there can't be any delay because of any technical issue because there is there are no pre-flight checks just commands are given if the comma and the commands are executed line by line although there could be some things in which a uh, computer may have autonomously detected some issue and decided to not go with the flight that could happen but uh, right now it is highly unlikely they must have checked that all those things right now and uh, yep don't seem to have any update right now waiting for them to come live hi octagrabber and octagrabber thanks for becoming the patreon uh, so much appreciate that uh, i mean it really helps me and this channel to stay alive yes puja it will be of it will be that uh, moment for percy rover in which she will actually see her child take its first flight on another planet i mean yeah it's it is true also because it was in uh its belly for around nine months and then it deployed and now it will take its first flight uh, so yeah talking about some more characteristics i mean uh the antenna so there are some small antennas radio antennas talk to earth via the mars 2020 rover and the mars orbiter so it does not have any very powerful antenna which is very much expected also from this size of helicopter so it has this uh, uh the, for the talking capability it talks with the rover as well as with the orbiter although with the rover will be like more loud and distinct and most of the communication will be from the rover orbiter will be like a backup option if something goes wrong with the uh, rover and the helicopter communication the, the orbiter could do something at least know whether it is alive or not or whether it is receiving signals or not so that is the case built to be light and strong powerful enough to lift on the thin mars atmosphere and these are the team which made this possible we do have a very good team you know ah yeah that uh, i just forgot to show you some of the images 
of this helicopter so this was the shield which it dropped in which it exposed the belly and then the shield of the helicopter was dropped in which it exposed the ingenuity helicopter this already has been done then the deployment sequence for the ingenuity helicopter commenced in which you can see here this photo was taken in which we can see the two these two legs have been extended and now right now it is in tilted position uh now it is in upright position and now the other two legs will deploy and then the row the helicopter is dropped onto the surface and now and then the Percy uh, okay so there was some issue you know uh there was some issue in the uh when the Percy was about to move above uh from the this uh, helicopter the antenna of the helicopter I mean was interfering this from the uh when the Percy was about to move above it so they had to do some of the maneuvers in which they ensure that Percy does not touch its antenna and uh, yeah so it, that happened successfully this is the image and uh, this was the fly uh, this rotor spin test it was a spin test as well as the test uh, as well as the commands which were given to the helicopter so as to unlock the blades so this maneuver in which both of the uh, blades move in one direction causes the blades to unlock and uh, yeah so we do have the stream now and i'll switch over to that so this was the image taken by the helicopter ingenuity helicopter so this is that image and this is the selfie taken by the percy rover <laughs> okay so let's just switch over to the and okay okay we don't want the music right now and let me just see whether okay good <sighs> so today is the day guys it is happening finally and although it's a bit early for people in the us but uh, if they can get up and see this beautiful event coming to its life that would be so cool let's hope this was successful and uh, we get to see some images as well as some video we do uh, i don't know whether we'll be able to see some videos taken by the Percy yet but uh, talking about the images we could get some i mean when the uh, the rover just landed then also it was able to relay back some of the images and that was phenomenal so we could very well expect some of the um images at least of the flight if that happened so let's hope everything went correctly with this thing here we go the mission control welcome to nasa's jet propulsion laboratory in southern california nasa's ingenuity mars Hel hitched a ride to the Red Planet on the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover, which landed in Jezero Crater on February 18th. Earlier today, Ingenuity should have autonomously performed its first flight attempt on Mars. Now the team is ready to receive the data that will tell them whether we've made history with the first controlled flight on another planet. Thank you for joining us at this early hour. I'm Marina Jurica of the JPL News Office. Ingenuity is a technology demonstration, which means it is a proof of concept experiment. After years of development on Earth, the team has one month to test the technology on Mars. Tonight, we'll talk to a few team members and then keep our eyes on the room where the helicopter operations team will be receiving and studying their data. To assist us in that room is one of the Ingenuity helicopter engineers, Taryn Bailey, who will help guide us through the steps the helicopter team is taking to see the results of their first flight and begin the month of Ingenuity. Welcome, Taryn. Hi, Marina. Thanks so much for having me. Super excited to be here. It's flight night. Woo! Yes, it's flight night. You had an integral part with the helicopter team. Can you tell us about your role? Yeah, so I'm a mechanical engineer and I helped in the assembly, integration, and testing of the Ingenuity vehicle. And it was really important that we simulate a Mars-like atmosphere in our testing. 
and in doing so, we knew it would give us the best chance to execute a real flight on Mars. And that's not an easy feat. Flying on Mars is much different than flying on Earth. Very difficult. It's less than 1% of Earth's atmosphere, making it very difficult to fly and generate enough lift. So, Taryn, what is the Ingenuity team preparing for right now? What are they waiting to see? We're waiting to see data confirming that we executed our first flight. The actual flight on Mars took place earlier today, and that's because Mars is over 178 million miles away, so there's a little bit of a delay. The <laughs> data is expected to hit the Deep Space Network at about 3.34 a.m. Pacific time, and we'll start processing the data shortly after that to see how we did. Fingers crossed. Thanks so much, Taryn. We'll be coming back to you shortly as we get closer to the start of the data downlink. What started out as a dream is now becoming reality for the Ingenuity helicopter team. Let's take a look at their journey. Sometimes you have to do something just to show that you can do it. This is a Wright Brothers moment on Mars for sure. An experimental aircraft. And in the same way, the Mars helicopter is designed to show that we can fly powered helicopter flight in the Martian atmosphere. From day one, this was the unwavering dream of our team, to get our helicopter launched to Mars so that we can get the opportunity to do the very first rotorcraft flight test in the actual environment of Mars. It's extremely difficult to fly at Mars because the atmosphere is so thin. Compared to Earth, at Mars it's less than 1%. So the first and foremost challenge is to make a vehicle that's light enough to be lifted. And then the second is to generate lift the rotor system has just been very fast. 2,000, 2,200, 2,400, 2,600. We're spinning between 2,000 and 3,000 revolutions per minute, and it takes a lot of energy. So it's that balance of a very light system, yet having enough energy that's needed to you know, spin the rotor so fast to lift, and on top of it, having to design in the autonomy it has to be fully autonomous from the time it takes off to the time it lands. What we do do on the ground is we plan the flights, and so we determine from here where we want the helicopter to go. Our experiment window is 30 Martian days. So we have planned uh, up to five flights of incremental difficulty. The very first flight, the main thing is we want to get the legs off the ground, and so we will basically go up uh, about three meters and we'll hover there uh, and then we'll come down again. And that will be the first, you know, really major milestone. Most of our flights will be at the three to five meter height. We will be going horizontally again at a few meters per second, probably go out, you know, 50, 70 meters and come back. In successive flights, we'll probably push that further, try to go further. So our priority will be to get back engineering telemetry and not so much images, but I'm sure we'll return a few, you know, because they'll always look cool. At this point, we've tested all we can on Earth. We have mathematical models that shows how it will fly at Mars, and we've tested it in the simulated environment that we can create on Earth. It really is time now to do the real flight test at Mars. Nothing is a given, but we have done everything we can in terms of a test program here on Earth. The vehicle is performing extremely well so far. It's been doing exactly the right thing even right now and it's bolted onto the Perseverance rover. So there's a very good chance that we'll pull it off, yes. But it's still high risk and none of us forget that you could have a glitch that, you know, could mean end of mission, yes. It's going to be exciting, reacting to any surprises we have. We can't wait. <laughs> What's really most important is Everything we're learning here is for the future rotorcraft systems that we want to introduce into space exploration. Very well. They do Along have... After a cup of coffee, coffee, you can join in on the conversation by asking the helicopter team questions at NASA JPL on all social platforms by using the hashtag Mars Helicopter. We will get to your questions later on in the program. Mimi Ong is the project manager for Ingenuity. She joins us now as they wait for the downlink to start. Welcome, Mimi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Marina. Now, Mimi, this has been quite the journey for you and your team. How do you feel finally reaching this moment? You know, our team has been working on the Mars helicopter for over six years, and for some even longer. 
towards this ultimate dream of experimenting the first flight at Mars. Here we are. Yes, here we are. And last week was a little bit of a week for you guys. You've had some technical challenges. What made you decide to go ahead with the first flight attempt this morning? April 9th was a surprise. We were two days away from first flight and just onto our very last checkout, high-speed spin of the rotor system. And there we discovered an intricate uh, timing issue that was preventing the helicopter from transitioning to flight mode, the mode that we need to be in to spin the rotor system high speed. So right after we found that, our team went into high gear, identified two possible solutions in a couple of days, and uh, we picked the solution that is really uh, the most simple, most straightforward option. So a note there though, that the solution that we have adopted, uh, it does transition to the helicopter into flight mode about 85% of the time. So when we go to flight, and if we don't go into flight mode, the helicopter will stay safe and we will attempt the first flight again. So just last Friday, we took the solution, applied it to Ingenuity and successfully spun Ingenuity's rotor system full speed. So next step is our first flight attempt now. And to give folks at home, Mimi, some perspective, the goal is to fly on a planet that has just 1% the atmosphere of Earth. And you're controlling that flight from over 100 million miles away. How difficult is that? Very, very difficult <laughs> to fly a rotorcraft at Mars. You know, a rotorcraft pushes the atmosphere to generate lift. And when there is that little atmosphere, the rotor system has to spin really fast. In fact, I will be spinning over 2,500 revolutions per minute for this flight today. And Ingenuity uh, is less than 1.8 kilograms, right? Four pounds. And in that four pounds, Ingenuity has to be able to fly in that very thin atmosphere and be able to survive and operate autonomously at Mars. For example, Ingenuity, our little four pounder, has been on the surface of Mars, keeping itself warm throughout the cold nights down to minus 130 degrees Fahrenheit and it's been doing that every day. So on top of that, our flight experiment at Mars, we are operating it all the way back here from Earth. So yes, yeah, very challenging, but we're ready. Oh, Ingenuity is small, but it is mighty and the team has come so far already. What other milestones has the helicopter team already achieved before this morning? Ingenuity has passed all of its milestones leading up to the first flight. So performed perfectly during cruise, survived the drop, and has been charging itself with high good energy levels each time. It's been communicating daily to the base station and keeping itself warm. And all, with the rotor system all checked out to full speed, Ingenuity is ready to go. And at the high level for the Mars Helicopter Technology Project, uh, we have three goals that are in line with NASA's agency level objectives. The first is to demonstrate here on Earth that it is possible to fly a controlled power flight in the thin atmosphere of Mars. We've done that. The second objective is to perform that actual flight at Mars. Well, we're about to get data back very soon here on that first flight. And the third is to return data to inform engineers uh, working on designing future generations of Mars helicopter. We have received valuable information data back since we have dropped on the surface. And tonight's uh, data from the first uh, flight will be extremely important. So we're ready to go. We are ready to go. Now, what is success going to look like for you guys tonight? So there are five scenarios, okay? So if the solution we implemented successfully transitions the helicopter to the flight mode, we'll be all right. But if it doesn't transition, uh, then we will be attempting the flight again tomorrow. If we don't get to flight mode tonight, then we'll go on. Uh, when we, if we go successfully to the flight mode, there are four scenarios. Full success in flight. Second scenario could be partial success in flight. The third would be not having sufficient information, in which case we'll need more time to determine what happened. The fourth could be failure. So whatever the outcome, we are set here to learn. Exactly. And a bright future is ahead, Mimi. The risk is huge, but the reward is high. We will all be rooting for your team. Good luck. Thank you, Marina. As we get closer to the data arrival, let's talk to Tim Canham, Ingenuity Operations Lead. Thanks for joining us, Tim.
Thanks, Marina. Glad to be here. Now, how does the data even get here from the helicopter to the team? Well, they say sometimes it's complicated, right? So the helicopter does not have a radio that can talk directly to Earth, so we need the help of the rover. As a matter of fact, the rover has an instrument on board, which is also built by the helicopter team called the helicopter base station. The helicopter base station has a radio which talks to the helicopter. So as you have, have heard, earlier today, the helicopter flew. As it was flying and after landed, it transferred its data to the base station. And then the rover takes the data from the base station and transmits it to an orbiter. That would be the MRO orbiter. And then the MRO orbiter turns to Earth and then sends all the data to the Deep Space Network. At that point, the Deep Space Network itself turns around, sends it to JPL and into the ground data systems. At that point, when it shows up, our team can take that data and decode it and see what happened during the flight. It sounds like it has to be well choreographed, Tim. How do you plan the first flight? It's a remote autonomous operation. What goes into the planning and the execution? Well, you know, we've done it all as a team as we have all along. It's, it's been a challenge with COVID to be remote, but we learned new ways to, to, to work together. Uh, we're a small team, but we're a fast moving team. We practiced all of these things over the course of the last year, from getting the data from the rover, to decoding it, to interpreting what it meant, and as we got to Mars, when the rover landed us safely, we were able to start our survey for right field, and we found it fortunately right near where we landed. And so working with other instruments on the rover, like Meta with the weather instrument and ZCAM, which is this beautiful camera to take pictures, we planned our flight. The flight will be about 40 seconds long. We'll lift off, we'll pivot towards the rover, and then we'll land. It's going to be a very basic flight, just to we want to do the very – uh, basic things first to make sure that we can do our flight. And then at that point, we will get all our data back and look at it. But we had to practice all those things. And we've been using this time on the surface to get familiar with the vehicle and how it operates and work around those various troubles that Mimi talked about. And the team is ready to go. And Tim, what specifically will the helicopter team be looking for as we go through this morning? So one of the great things about this helicopter is it has a very powerful processor. It's tiny, but it's powerful, and we get lots and lots of data. The processor itself is about 100 times as powerful as the processor, even on the rover. And so we get all this data, as I mentioned, that gets sent to the rover, and then the rover sends it to us. So as our downlink lead, Michael Starch, sees that data arrive in the data center, he will decode it and look for it. He will look for the successful arrival of the data. At that point, we turn the data over to Hobart Grip, our chief pilot, and he will look at the portion of the data that relates to how the flight went. There are a series of events that the helicopter sends as it transitions through each stage of the flight. And when Hobart is able to verify that the progression went as planned, then he'll turn to the actual data and look at a plot of the altimeter, which is one of the instruments used in navigation. We should see the plot of the altimeter go up to the, to the flight height and then come back down again. And that will be a positive confirmation that we got it. And finally, from the helicopter side, we are snapping a series of black and white downward facing pictures as the helicopter commences for landing. So if everything goes well, we should see some of those landing pictures and be able to look at them on the screen. So Hobart will display those as well. And then finally, if all goes well, there should be at the same time our data is coming down, there should be data coming down from the ZCAM instrument that I mentioned, the MassCam Z, a really powerful camera system that's going to try and capture us in flight. So if they, were the, if they were able to capture that moment of flight, then they will be able to display those images on their screen and be able to see a quick view of how the helicopter flew. That's how wow. it's going to go. This would well, be very Sam, exciting. We can't wait to see those photos for sure. Thank you so much and good luck to you. So the uh, in Rihanna asked, will uh, Ingenuity perform to... its total flight at its first flight? No. Uh, it will be just, a, as they mentioned, just a hover and then uh, back about 40 seconds of the flight time. Welcome, Thomas. I'm so glad to be here, Marina. Hi. Hi. Now, how important is tonight to space exploration? Oh, it's techno technology demonstrations are really important for all of us. You know, it's really taking a tool that we haven't been able to use and put it in the box of tools that is available for all of our missions going forward at Mars. So for me, it's really exciting personally and for the community overall, it opens up new doors. 
And Thomas, why is it important to have that aerial dimension to space exploration? There's many applications that require that. Imagine, for example, going into areas of, you know, and exploring them that we cannot use a rover for. There's some of these crater walls that are so exciting, scientists have been writing papers about it. It's also important to have the aerial dimension in the context of human exploration of Mars, of, of which we're dreaming even now, and that aerial dimension being kind of able to scout ahead is just absolutely critical. Well, thank you so much for join, joining us, Dr. Z. Hey, thanks. Let's check back in now with Taryn Bailey to see how things are shaping up with the team's next steps. Hey, Taryn. Hey, Marina. We're moments away from receiving that all-important data, and the anticipation is definitely building in the room. Everyone's very focused, just waiting on pins and needles, eagerly waiting for that data to arrive, and we're just preparing ourselves for what comes down. And, you know, this was such a big challenge for us to embark upon as a team, and we are such a small and close neighborhood. We're just preparing ourselves for what comes down. And, you know, this was such a big challenge for us to embark upon as a team. And we are such a small and close-knit team. So it was really, it's really great to be back in the room with all of my colleagues and my teammates. Uh, we're all here in support of one another. We have Bob Dalrym watching, and he's been the vision behind this so from the very beginning. So we have such great leadership on this team, and i um, very excited to be here. <laughs> Guys, hold your and breath. It is from a lot of the people. time, and we should be getting some data now. From as we progress through the morning. Yes, yeah, so we'll first hear from our downlink lead, Michael Starch, and he's going to be the person that first lays eyes on the data. And when he receives it, he'll unpack it. He'll run through a data receivable procedure, um, make his callouts, and then he'll hand it over to our guidance, navigation, and control lead, also our chief pilot, Havard Grip. Um, he'll interpret that data and display an altimeter plot to indicate if we flew. Some other voices we'll hear on VOCA <laughs> will be um, our deputy ops lead, Teddy Zenatos, who will report on the battery status, and our systems engineer, Yako Karras, who will report on the motor health. And we're going to be taking a couple of your social media questions right now as we wait for Michael to make that announcement that the data is coming in. So, Taryn, a man named Flo on Instagram asks, why did we send a helicopter to Mars in the first place? Great question. Why not? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sending a, an aerial vehicle uh, at this stage especially, um, you know, we have sent five rovers uh, to Mars and now we have an aerial dimension which uh, Dr. Zerbukin pointed out that it's really important because it elevates the next stage of space exploration. And we can do more science with it. It can be a coordinated effort for future missions. It also opens the doorway for human exploration. And the helicopter can go into areas where the rover can't. So there are a lot of um, caves and, and the rover has to overcome a lot of obstacles on the ground that the helicopter can ideally move around. And that's why it's such a great option for uh, putting an aerial vehicle on another planet. And as Tim mentioned, it has to be well choreographed, this flight. And so Elio on Instagram asks, why is the first flight only vertical? So every flight, we're going to build upon it. But this first flight, our mission success criteria is really to demonstrate that we can fly. And so that's why this first flight is really all about being able to demonstrate that we can fly on another planet. And so that means we'll do... Um, a three meter hover above the Martian surface, touch back down to signal success, and then we can um, advance from there. And getting back to what everyone's going to be looking at, you had mentioned that Hovard is going to be looking at a plot. What exactly is that going to look like? Is it easy to see if the flight actually took place? Yes, yeah, so his altimeter plot will indicate a peak, and um, we'll start off with a flat line indicating that we were grounded. Then we'll spin up and it'll have a steep incline to show that we've uh, risen. And then at the top, we'll have a dwell where we're hovering and then another uh, steep decline in the graph to show that we've touched down. So it should be pretty cut and dry to see that we have successfully flew. Hi, Shashank, how are you? And this morning
morning. Of course, as you mentioned, the helicopter flew a few hours ago and we're waiting to see if it did happen. But you did a whole lot of testing here on Earth before you sent Ingenuity up there. Tell me what it was like to test the helicopter and simulate that Mars environment. Absolutely. So it went just, just because the helicopter is the first of its kind, the testing also is very similar in that way. We had to simulate a Mars-like atmosphere by using very large thermal vacuum chambers to allow us to control the temperature and pressure so we can simulate a Mars-like atmospheric density. Then we also created a gravity offload system that compensates for the difference in gravity between Earth and Mars. Um, in addition to that, we validated a lot of our requirements with engineering models. So these are developmental models that we made. And um, they went through extensive environmental and aerodynamic testing. And so they were the precursors to our flight vehicle, which is, of course, currently on Mars. And as Mimi mentioned before, it had to be super light and super fast. Why is that? Oh, flying on Mars is very difficult. You guys have heard it before. It's less than 1% of Earth's atmosphere, and that means that we have to have something really lightweight for us to overcome that mass to generate enough lift. And, you know, kudos and thank you very much to our friends over at Air Environment who designed and built this custom rotor system that is super lightweight. Each blade is less than I think two we have some, something, material. guys. For that very reason there's some movement we can see here this helicopter is four feet tip to tip so that's about that's 1.2 meters that's super large for something that's essentially carrying the size of a tissue box <laughs> just to give you a frame of reference and in addition to that generating enough lift revol involves having high rpm so we're flying at an, on an average of 2500 rpm 2,500 RPM. I just want everyone to sit with that for a minute because here on Earth, helicopters go 400 to 500 RPM. So that is so much faster, Taryn. It's incredibly fast, incredibly fast. Every detail on this vehicle has, is made and designed for it to be the most efficient. We are beginning to see data products. We are beginning to see the data, guys. It is happening. So we just have to see whether we will continue to watch data products as the full set comes in. For sure. All right, Taryn. Well, we just heard from Michael that they are taking a look at the data just starting to flow into the deep space network antenna on Earth. What happens now that the rover has started sending that data? Yes. So for those of you at home, the deep space network is our giant communications network. That this is downlink. Early indications, data products look nominal. Wow. This is so Excellent. cool. We'll continue to wait for the full data set to arrive. In the meantime, I'll explain a little bit about the Deep Space Network and that it's our main communications tool to um, communicate, talk to our Ingenuity helicopter from across our solar system. So our downlink lead just announced that data products had just started to arrive and that they look nominal, which is a good indication. Um, while we wait for the full data set to arrive, um we'll we'll wait <laughs> i guess that's what we'll do we'll wait in the meantime and we'll answer another social media question along those lines jose on youtube asks how long does it take for the video signal from the helicopter to reach earth sorry can you repeat the question yes <laughs> how long does it take for the video signal from the helicopter to reach earth yeah, so that goes into having that very long distance between Earth and us. So uh, Tim touched on this a little earlier, and that's why we have this delay. So the helicopter flew earlier, and similarly, whenever we send data, it's the same process where there's going to be a delay of when, it, when, we, when we run the data and then when it hits Earth. So it's about um, four hours from when something is executed to when we receive it. For larger files, though, sometimes that can take longer, so it all depends. But today we'll be receiving uh, images, still images, of the helicopter. And I know we are eagerly anticipating those images. And we talked a little bit about this before, Taryn. Uh, we have been just floored by all the great images coming in from Perseverance, but Ingenuity has cameras as well. 
Absolutely. The helicopter is equipped with two cameras. Uh, one is our onboard the navigation should be camera, good now. and that's the image that we'll receive tonight. And that's going to be a black and white image that's pointed straight down at the Martian surface, and will hopefully be showing us hovering above it. Uh, our second camera is our return to Earth camera, and that's our higher resolution camera that is a color photo and shows more of the Martian horizon uh, snapshot, the beauty shot, if you will. And then, um, and that that image will be utilized for future um, flight missions. And we have another great social media question here from Hing on Facebook asking, what is the biggest question this first flight will answer about aerodynamics on Mars? Well, the biggest question that we had to answer when embarking on this was, can we lift? Can we generate enough lift and fly in a Martian atmosphere? And I think this first flight will indicate that for sure. And will answer that question. And um, whatever we receive back will definitely give us more information moving forward, uh, regardless of this first flight uh, or, or potential other outcomes. For sure. So, and we've got another question on yes, social. Yes, Army, I remember. Well, he on Twitter asks, happy flight day. Why are the blades shaped the way they are? That's a really great question. So for, uh, in order to generate enough lift, uh, each blade, I mentioned that these were a custom design, and what we call them are airfoils. And they're developed in a way so that it generates enough lift for us to fly and have enough thrust underneath of um, our helicopter vehicle. So uh, they have that funky shape because of the aerodynamic um, elements that help it generate enough lift. And once again, reminding everybody that you guys are controlling this from over a hundred million miles away here on Earth. I always try to wrap my head around that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it is so far away and uh, it's, it's miraculous to even think that this is something that's technically already been executed earlier today. We're just kind of standing by and waiting for that data to arrive to indicate, you know, success. So they right now they are just getting well, all the all data and uh, processing it basically. So we'll see whether it was successful or not. But the initial uh, look at the data was nominal. So that's a good thing. So let's just hear them now. Or any other updates? And uh, so basically it was nominal only and we and we can see on the projector also the data is coming back on the earth. The team is analyzing it, processing it and hopefully we'll get to see the altimeter plot also. And uh, in, in that altimeter plot what you will see is the um, graph of the time versus the altitude which the uh, helicopter has achieved. So it will be a straight line first and then there will be a steep in which it will rise up to a 3 meter altitude then it will hover so there will again be a, a horizontal line and then again a down. So. Uh, while the time it hovers it will be a horizontal line and then uh, it when it lands it will uh, the plot will come down so this plot will basically tell us and tell the team that everything is good this is downlink data products appear to be in we will begin processing shortly okay so every set full set of data has right now arrived and they will beginning processing and in this processing they will hand over to another guy this which we are beginning to fetch data from Mars 2020. Whoa, they use GitHub. That GitHub. They must have been using open source technologies then. That's cool.
This is Downlink. We have pulled in data products from Mars 2020. Waiting for the confirmation. The processing has begun and uh, they are tend to use the open source technologies here. Could see is the GitHub open there. This hey. is downlink confirming we received Mars 2020 telemetry, confirming that we received Mars 2020 events, confirming that we received helicopter data products, confirming that we have data products, confirming that we unpacked image and one hertz data. Okay. So they have received everything now. And Fred from Netherlands asks, will there be wind on the locations of flying with? Uh, well, they we can't predict the weather on Mars, but they do have some model in which they can, you know, uh, predict whether there will be high winds or not. So uh, they, when they will tend to fly, they will ensure that uh, hopefully and luckily also they will they first of all they will ensure uh, mathematically and then wait for the luck that there is no as such winds but this rover is uh sorry this helicopter is made to handle wind so if there are winds also then also it will be able to fly properly it has been tested in that scenario This is downlink. We have successfully ingested one hertz data. Confirming that we have helicopter data products, helicopter telemetry, helicopter events. Confirming helicopter file listing. Confirming expected boot counts. This is downlink confirming battery uh, data has been received. Rotor motors appear healthy. Swashplate servos appear healthy. Overall actuators appear healthy. Okay. Confirming thermal report generation. Confirming analog report generation. We should be getting the plot also that will be very helpful for us to see at least we do have a lift off confirmation and the router telecom report generation and a nominal rotor health which is what we want to hear This is downlink handing off to flight control for telemetry analysis. This flight control confirming that we have EVRs from Ingenuity. Ingenuity is reporting having performed spin up, takeoff, climb, hover, descent, landing. 
touchdown and spin down. Wow, 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 wow. This is what we wanted to hear. And al altimeter data confirms that Ingenuity has performed its first flight, the first flight <laughs> of a powered aircraft to another planet. This is what we wanted to hear, guys. We have a successful flight there. Wow. I just don't have any words. I am right now fully excited for the images to come back. Hopefully we should be seeing that. Do we have an image or what? Yep. There we go guys. We have an image of the flight when it is on the... Wow man. This is so cool. We now we they will have to make a video out of all the images, but here we can see the images in which uh, the uh, the helicopter is above the ground and uh, the rotors are spinning. So hopefully the rotors are spinning, obviously because we got the telemetry there. Taryn, go ahead and repeat that. <laughs> so the image we're looking at on the screen is the image from our onboard navigation camera showing us hovering above the surface of Mars. How incredible! <laughs> and that's its shadow, right, Taryn? Yes, that's its shadow. So the onboard navigation camera shadow. So the onboard navigation camera points straight down. So we're seeing its shadow right now. I can just hear Mimi in the background. This is real. This is real. It's so amazing. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's really, really feeling it now. So we're uh, we're gonna wait for the, the Parsi's images. Image of us. Wow! Wow! Man! Wow! This is so cool. The Parsi rover actually took the images in which we can see it flying <laughs> can we get a repeat of that shot please wow this is this is incredible so yes ex explain what we just saw with the perseverance image so the perse Perseverance image is showing us um, grounded at first. It's, it's actually a video, which is great. It's grounded at first and then shows us hovering our three meters above the Martian surface and then touching back down. It's amazing. Brilliant. Please replay it. Please replay Everyone this video. Is super excited. <laughs> so I would say it's a success. I would say it's a <laughs> Teams are really very excited right now. We can see the spin up, the hover. We can see that guys, it, the hover is also looking very much stable and then the touchdown. Wow.
history doesn't, we don't know from history what Orville and Wilbur did after their first successful flight. The right brothers that I mentioned, the two brothers helped each other. Well, you know I'm hugging you virtually, and <laughs> you guys haven't been with me for four, five, six years. If it weren't for COVID-19, you guys don't have a chance of me. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be really very excited. I'm giving you the hugs. Look, we together uh, flew at Mars, and we together now have our right brothers moment. So, you know, history does tell us that soon after that first flight, Wilbur and Orville did go right back to work. They flew three little flights that day higher and further than the first one. So we know, you know, like the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, we know that our time can make a difference. At Jezero Crater, Mars is not yet over. This is just a first rate flight. So let's enjoy this moment. But we must enjoy this moment because over the years, and there are a few of you especially, but there are some that have never let me celebrate fully. Every time we hit one of these major milestones, not yet, not yet. And we'll keep moving on. So we must take a moment to celebrate this moment. Really important. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations. Take that moment, and then after that, let's get back to work and more flights. Congratulations. <laughs> Wow. What a great excitement of great, what a great person also. I mean, guys, they, there we have it. The ingenuity actually, actually, actually flown on the surface of Mars. And we have crossed the first hurdle now. Wow. Congratulations to the Ingenuity helicopter team on making history this morning. To get the latest updates on Ingenuity, follow on at NASA JPL on Facebook and Twitter. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us at this early morning hour. The journey on this month of Ingenuity continues. Join us for a news briefing later this morning at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for a deeper analysis of Ingenuity's first flight and what what this means for NASA. I'm Marina Jurica. Thanks for watching and good night and go ingenuity. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. This was fully incredible and we could see the excitement of the team member. This is the image taken by the ingenuity itself of it uh, thrusting the air downwards and uh, hovering onto the surface. We could see the uh, again the video. Yeah, we could see the rotor spin up, then the hover, and it was it looks so 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 stable right now. We can see that, and then touch down. Although we couldn't see any much of the dust or something like that uh, going, but yeah, it is good, you know. <laughs> so talking about okay Shashang says why is there a sudden peak at a time versus altitude versus okay so the peak peak actually represented that it actually flown to that height so there was uh, some fun initial line okay when initial line when the, uh, the helicopter was stable okay at that time nothing was there but just any initial horizontal line and then uh, when uh, the helicopter actually flown so the altitude rise uh, rose and hence uh, this uh, the peak also we could see that uh, peak also rose so that happened and then it hovered for there for around 30 seconds or so so there was a straight line there also where at three meter altitude and then it came down so that's how the graph looks like. So yes, uh, Maroj, guys, uh, I can't pronounce the name, but yeah. Uh, Fred Sar asked, why was the touchdown so fast? It wasn't fast. It's just the uh, video which was uh, received by them. Just took some initial and uh, uh, you can say those um, important 
events and important milestones images so that's why we could see that it seemed to us it was fast but it wasn't it uh, when hopefully when they will release a full video of uh, the helicopter actually uh, doing its thing and hopefully the ingenuity helicopter itself has taken some images so that also uh, from that also we can get some video uh, in that we could see there was a gentle touchdown hopefully but they need to now work on the after flight checks on the helicopter because after the flight there will be so many changes first of all the battery has drained for so much time for the first time now and now they will have to recharge it and hopefully they will have to see whether there was any mechanical damage also or not uh, because of the flight and then a uh, touchdown if the touchdown was not smooth although we could see that uh, this helicopter could handle a good amount of force because the 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 legs are kind of a flexible which flexes and absorb absorbs the forces so but it didn't doesn't seem to be like a very uh you know um difficult thing to see and uh, everything went smoothly in my opinion first images show dust is not blown away from the ingenuity yes uh, rehan um, see the thing is the dust uh, i can't see the dust because hopefully the, there was not very much dust also the thrust which it produces downwards is not very much because it only has to lift around 1.8 kilograms and just remember it's one percent the atmosphere right so people uh, like on the uh, rover we have uh, the rover which has solar panels there there we have the dust and all on the solar panels right so people are like why can't they attach a simple fan on it so that they it can blow away the dust but that can't happen on mars we can see that uh, barely there any dust move because the first of all the force was not very much because only two kilograms of weight was uh, being managed and also the one percent atmosphere but those images can't be you know uh, the uh, evident proof of whether there was any dust blown or not we will have to wait for the uh, processed images and videos so as to see some high quality stuff so yeah so guys this was it uh, we saw a beautiful lift off of the uh, helicopter from the surface of the mars and now human beings have achieved another milestone in which they have actually flown something of the other planet and now since this is successful we could very well see some other missions to the mars in which there will only be an helicopter and not any rover or something like that and uh, uh, when there is a helicopter na that would be very interesting to see how will they land a helicopter on mars because rover obviously it does not have any thrusting mechanism or something like that in which it has to uh it can fire up and land it has to have something like that sky crane maneuver which it has to do but for a helicopter you can opt for a sky crane maneuver you you know you can go for it but uh, the delta v is very much precious on uh, in space and on other planets and uh, people look for to save on it so whether it will be like it will come down and heat shield and all those are sub separated and then the helicopter will be dropped down and then the helicopter itself will thrust produce thrust with its uh, propellant uh, uh, blades and all and uh, come to a a gentle touchdown we'll have to see they will have to plan it but it will be very you know interesting to see that thing because uh firing those uh, rotors after nine months or so will be very interesting so yeah we'll have to see how will they land a helicopter on mars but uh, next mission or after the next mission we could very well see missions to mars with the helicopter on it and uh, don't forget there is one more uh, helicopter based mission which is titan dragonfly the mission to titan and the uh, the mission is named as dragonfly that is also a kind of a drone which they are sending to the titan moon of the jupiter so yeah yeah rihan exactly we'll have to see and wait uh, how will they do it but 
it was a successful flight whether uh let me see we if we have anything else here any other uh, images or videos So this is the peak which you were talking about so analyzing the graph it actually you know uh, you can see here uh, first of all it was a, a straight line in which the helicopter wasn't doing anything and this period hopefully is the time in which it actually was spinning up its uh, rotors and then uh, there was a steep incline to the three meters altitude in which it actually uh, achieved three meters but from the plot itself it went above three meters and then it stayed there for a while around 20 to 30 seconds and then uh, uh, a gentle touchdown in which this period this line hopefully represent um um the the slowdown of the rotors so wow and the graph which we can see is a you know <clears throat> is a very familiar one it looks like a matte plot lip graph uh, yeah <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully the github was actually used to study this thing to plot this uh, uh, graph in that scenario <sighs> this happiness is contagious exactly and uh, i can see this thing whole day this video whole day spinning of the rotors hovering hovering was very stable in this hover it was supposed to pitch also a bit and then the touchdown and the uh, rotors coming to its rest wow so yes this was it guys if you have any other questions you can surely ask me but this is the moment which we all were waiting for and the Percy captured it beautifully hopefully this is not a camera angle in which we can get a high quality image but they will get some high quality images also from Percy rover and uh, we could hopefully see something some better videos of it uh, actually taking the flight so this is it the next event coming up is the crew 2 mission to the ISS now and hopefully we can see another uh, final milestone uh, you know uh, left which is to be achieved on Mars now is the China's landing on Mars and uh, we can get it around May and hopefully so yeah i guess its horizontal range is zero yes the horizon no 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 shashank for this flight the range was zero obviously it just went up and came down but uh, after, for subsequent flights they are they will be incrementing the difficulty in which they will go far, uh, further high and uh, horizontally as well so we'll have to see but only constraint in that is that they will uh, they can go up to 15 feet in height as well as um, the fly total flight time which the batteries can handle is around 90 seconds that's it and other than that there is no problem so yeah so i think we can end the stream now and uh, uh, i'm very much happy and uh, like mimi she was really very happy about achieving this uh, uh, incredible milestone she was supposed to be happy i mean yeah she has worked for five to six years on this project and now finally they can see their fruits of their hard work in action so yeah so until then this is pian shiroila you just saw rocket gyan stay safe stay healthy and bye bye <laughs>